Back in 1446, Brunelleschi's dome for Florence Cathedral pushed bricks and mortar to the limit. To crown the West Baden Hotel in Indiana with an even bigger dome, engineers would have to find a better building material. At the turn of the 20th century, West Baden Springs in Indiana was one of America's most popular spa towns. Local entrepreneur Colonel Lee Sinclair wanted to cash in on the boom and build a luxury hotel for the wealthy visitors. He demanded that his grand building should be finished off with the biggest dome in the world. Lee Sinclair, the hotel's owner, had traveled to Wiesbaden, Germany, to see some of the world-class spas there. And he had also seen several of the domes in, in Europe, and he was asking these architects in the United States to design a dome structure. He already had the size in mind, 200 feet. Most of the architects that he interviewed turned him down and said, you know, Lee Sinclair, it's 66 years old, you're a fine guy, but you're crazy, it can't be done. Sinclair's architect knew he couldn't build such a big dome with bricks and mortar, but he found inspiration at the cutting edge of 19th century technology. What we've got here is a sort of, it's a bridge, more or less, and on the top we've got a deck which might have had a, a railway running on top of it or a road, but it's all held up by a steel structure. And I'm going to take the top off and we'll have a look at the steel structure. And what you see here is quite surprising really to the 19th century person because it's a really light open structure. If you compare this with a masonry structure which would essentially have been solid with masonry, it's really light. And the building designers looked at that and said, well, I can turn that into a building. And this is exactly what Colonel Sinclair did. He turned to a bridge engineer to help him build his dome. He locked six bridge trusses around a central hub. These supported a roof made from tiles and glass. Together, they formed the grand atrium of West Baden Springs Hotel. The forces generated by the weight of the roof are channeled along the trusses and converge at the hub, also called the compression ring. We are in the geometric center of the compression ring, which is like a drum, 10 feet in diameter, 10 feet high. And you can see each truss is riveted, and that's where all the compression comes. Steel is very strong and light, but it has an Achilles heel. It expands in heat. And we've actually measured from a very hot day to a very cool evening, this dome will travel in any direction an inch and three quarters. If a steel dome is locked to the masonry, heat expansion becomes a serious problem. On hot days, the heat from the sun will make the steel expand twice as much as the masonry. This could tear the roof from the stone pillars with disastrous results. To prevent this, engineers at West Baden attached rollers to the base of each truss. These move with the steel structure, allowing it to grow and shrink as it heats and cools over the course of the day. The magnificent crystal atrium under Colonel Sinclair's dome draws guests from across the country to West Baden Springs. To this day, they are left in awe of his monumental achievement. 
This building did have probably the first high-tech design of steel trusses. Uh, it's almost like when you walk through here, take off your shoes for you walk on holy ground. The legacy of the bridge designer is plain to see at Oita today. But the Japanese have taken the idea to the extreme. To span the huge expanse of the Oita Stadium with a roof, the Japanese builders have little option in their choice of building material. For the roof structure on Oita Stadium, the engineers decided to use steel. Steel is good for spanning large distances because it has a good strength to weight ratio, so the members don't become too heavy even if they're very long. But as Oita is over four times bigger than the West Baden Dome, the Japanese can't follow its simple hub and spoke design. It will make the roof so heavy it would collapse under its own weight. That's why Oita needs clever geometry to make its roof stand up. Seven bridge-like trusses form the core of the roof. A ring of steel binds the bridge trusses together. Finally, a huge spine truss runs the whole length of the stadium to lock all the elements into a rock-solid steel skeleton, strong enough to carry its 12,000-ton skin. And to lighten the whole structure, the engineers make their trusses hollow. 